Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back to another episode of Sam and Max. Last episode, we ran out of time clicking on everything, figuring out what has changed, talking to Hubliss, so we didn't even make it into Bosco's Inconvenience. So let's go into it now and see what's new now. See what he's paranoid about in this situation. Who's attacking him? Or trying to deliver to him? What's shaking, Bosco? Ah, greetings, comrades, dog and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic States? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha <laughs> ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Baskoborsky, Russian proprietor of Workers' Glorious Warehouse of Inconvenience, no? No! But now I make new start in America, <laughs> which I love. So it's no need to aim in sophisticated targeting equipment at me. So why the Russian disguise this time, Bosco? What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? He's perfectly natural, comrades. I work with your American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know, they know. Who knows what? The feds, man. Uncle Sam. The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. <laughs> that's me, Max. So why is the government watching you, Bosco? Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Um... Just humor the poor guy, Max. <laughs> but I make new start in America, which I love. So there's no need to target me. So... Sadly, in 2015, we kind of know the government is spying on everybody. Well, let's see if he has a defense against the feds. I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirly gig to defend yourself against the feds? He's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. What about us loafers? All are welcome. Come day of victory, workers will unite to bring downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, he's all true! Plus, <laughs> I'm working on a satellite missile defense system. You're making a missile defense system? <laughs> missile defense system? Isn't that more than a little bit overkill? Yet! We are strong like bear against attack! I'm working on modifying BTAS Part D. Your anti-delivery system? That's right. It was already programmed to keep people from delivering goods to the store, so I just went into the database and changed beef jerky to intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now anyone can just deliver a blimp load of beef jerky to your store without fear of reprisal? It's small price to pay for freedom. <laughs> so the question is, are we going to use this information to stop a missile, or are we going to use this information to deliver beef jerky? I don't know. We'll have to find out. But first, let's buy something. We want to buy something. Da is evil but necessary private enterprise. So, one of the complaints you can lodge against this game is that um, one of the very few major elements in every episode that you get, you get directly from Bosco and you just have to figure out how to get the ridiculous amount of money he wants. Uh, it would have been nice if they weren't so heavy-handed about reusing that gag. Because it's happened in all three of the episodes so far, and I bet it's going to happen again in this episode. What do you got? His most glorious invention, comrade, is useful for, how you say, questioning. Questioning. His <laughs> tool makes easy, even the most difficult, how you say, interrogation. Interrogation. Truth serum? Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks, or does it actually work? Both will make anyone get rid of <laughs> inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. All right, give us the truth serum. We'd like that truth serum, Comrade Boscovich. He's good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? 
100 million dollars. The price goes the up by 10 every off, time. Austin. Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. A hundred million for truth serum. Isn't that a little pricey for truth serum? It's bargain! It really does work and I haven't even tried it yet. Sam, this morning I used your toothbrush. Results are guaranteed. I used it to clean out my ears. This is refreshingly liberating. Besides, I need the money to complete my satellite defense system. I needed to clean mm. out my ears because I've been rummaging through. Okay, I've heard enough. So, I think maybe we just are trying to give money to him in this case so he finishes his missile defense. Let's ask him what else he has. Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Net. Net. Do you have any souvenir snow globes from the Mystery Vortex? Yet. Yet. Do you have any Lobster Pots brand cereal? Yet. <laughs> so clicking on the this gag actually has helped in at least a couple of episodes, the first and second one. Do you have any Tagalog rhyming dictionaries abridged? Yet. Hmm. Do you have any wiener cozies? Da. We just got shipment of those in this week. Let me look. Oh boy! Wait, did you say wiener cozy? I thought you said Navajo blankets. No, we're all out of wiener cozy. So, Navajo blankets are gonna probably play a role. Do you have any Navajo blankets? Yet. Wait a minute, he just said he did. Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Yet. Okay, so, never mind that. Nothing for us right now. What's that smell? Always a good question to ask. Something in here smells like fermented hay. It's like sweaty jock straps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. Keep it down, guys. You're scaring off the other customers. What are the customers? What other customers? Max and I are always the only ones in here. It's good thing. Merchandise is always available. Coming in here is like visiting old friends. Some of these cereal boxes are from the McKinley administration. I carved our initials in one of the weenies, uh, so we'll be best joke. friends forever, Sam. You need some new weenies. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie rotisserie? Needs no cleaning. Adds vintage flavor to tasty friends. Okay. So that's all we can talk See to him later, about Bosco. for now. He's no Basco, comrade. He's only loyal worker, Baskovorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Nothing on the sale table today. One dollar lottery tickets, two dollars. I'm feeling lucky already. Let's see what the magazines say. What do you have here? Organ Trader, Self-Loathing Weekly, Hot Bunny. Ooh, let me see that. Hot Bunny? No, Self-Loathing Weekly. Hmm. Whee! No thanks, I brought my lunch today. It's the same old, Are same old. Are beef or pork? Or woolly mammoth meat. One hundred percent all natural ingredients, aged to perfection. Okay, they're natural, but what natural? Foamy bread. Made from real styrofoam? No, artificial styrofoam. What's this month's flavors of sludgy? Sludgies. This week's flavors: caviar and borscht. Borscht, the red menace. Nacho. Nachos. They're mine. Nachos. And condiment. Ketchup, mustard, and purple stuff. As vaguely referred to on TV. Let's see if we can use the bathroom this episode. Ooh, fun. <laughs> Seems like we can, but nothing happened. So there's, doesn't seem like there's an item to really acquire here. We will have to get the truth serum from them eventually, but that's going to be later on after we get a hundred million dollars somehow. So now we can get back to what we were sh shooting for and the reason we came here in the first place in the previous episode. We're going to the office, we're going to call the phone in front of the White House and uh, 
see what the doorman says. Let's see. Let's check the donut box. The donut box is a happy reminder of a bygone era, specifically last July. Hello? Jerk! So, I'm pretty sure if I click on any of these things in here, it's just going to say the same thing that it said in the other episodes. Like Jesse James's head. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. Like exact I same phrase. It's especially valuable because it's autographed. And by the fourth episode, there even the game creators have admitted, let's not have them click on the same thing and hear the same thing. So they had us immediately jump to the White House. Let's see what's behind the closet. That changes. Hey, it's Leonard from episode three. It's so, our favorite shifty card cheat, Leonard Steak Charmer. How you doing, Leonard? Good, good. Let's check the rat hole since he's not here. Anybody home? Guess not. Let's check the TV. Uh, that might be some information. My fellow Americans, we must remember to live life to the fullest and keep joy in our hearts. To that end, I have introduced mandatory psychological examinations to guarantee that all citizens meet the minimum required level of joy and good will. He's like a kinder, gentler Mussolini. <laughs> you know. A mandatory mental evaluation every now and then might not be a terrible thing. Think about it if you got a driver's license and you had to go in and prove you just weren't crazy to get it. My fellow Americans, we must remember to live life to See the See if there's anything different this time. keep joy in our hearts. To that end, I have introduced mandatory psychological examinations to guarantee that all citizens meet the minimum required level of joy and good will. He's like a kinder, gentler Mussolini. So, same thing. We're gonna use the phone. Let's check the answering machine first. That might be new. Hello, constituents. This is your president. When I took office three years ago, I made a small promise to help you, the American people. Now, thanks to your collective short-term memory, I can say that I've delivered on that promise. <laughs> So we might need to use the bug on the answering machine to record the president talking. Who are you calling, Sam? Mr. Pizza or the White House? Let's call Mr. Pizza first. Mr. Pizza, two medium pineapple and asbestos pies, please. Oh yeah? Well, same to you, jerk. What'd he say? Thank you, and have a nice day. <laughs> he didn't give an address to deliver it, though. Who are you calling, Sam? We'll call the White House. The White House? White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Have you checked the... Uh... Baby? Have you checked the baby? Yes, sir. Sleeping soundly. Oh. Good job, then. Okay, so that would record them saying, yes, sir, sleeping soundly. Who are you calling, Sam? Let's call the White House again. We'll be right there. We've got two very special agents coming to the White House today. One is tall, well-dressed, and devilishly handsome, and the other is Max. Grant them full clearance, over. Can't do that without approval form signed in triplicate, sir. Regulations. Darn it. That would record them saying that. So let's see what the Who third are you thing is. Sam? The White, the White House. House. White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Please hold. Hello, please hold. Roger that. Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. Hello. Is anyone there? Okay. Let's play the answering machine. In the upcoming election, it's important to ask yourself. Do you feel safer than you did 
did it three years ago, or would you rather return to the days when crazed packs of robotic hyenas prowled the street, targeting their death ray laser eyes on you and on your children? I don't remember when that happened. Maybe it did. Alright, so we got him on hold at least. That's probably going to be good enough. But I bet we're going to do this gag twice. Back to the White House we go. We have collected a lot more information than two signs. And a boxy glove. Where are we going, Sam? To the White we're House. Off to the White House. Oh boy! Okay, so, we have post no bills here, and he's stuck. We could either walk in, or we could post a bill. Free home delivery. On the sign. Nah. On this sign? No can do. On the White House door. No dice. Give me all you got on the white else door. No thanks. On this sign. Uh-uh. Here. No dice. Okay, so it doesn't seem like any of those do. Let's get the bug. Okay, here's what he said. Just step away from the door, please. Yes, sir, that is all I say. Thank you, sir. Alright, let's walk just through the white house door then. Oh wow, we could just walk through. I overthought it. Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. <laughs> They've got nothing to be afraid of. So, in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan, and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. He's been hypnotized. By the whiskey-soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant. That's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max, and pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So, we figured out he's hypnotized, and we got to figure out how to beat him. And this is WARP from Episode 2 is recording him. So, a local TV station... Is recording the president and broadcasting. The Liberty Bell is a light for this room, just as America is a light for. Yes, metaphor is such an ugly quality in furniture. Whee! Hmm. Let's look at the magazine. House of Representatives and Gardens. Here's a classic misnomer. As far as to my understanding, at least, the Oval Office doesn't, windows behind them don't actually go to the outside. There's actually a hallway, and then maybe on the other side of that hallway is the outside. So, it's not really, like, it, it would be really silly to, you'd think, to think some sniper with a high-powered bullet could shoot through bulletproof glass and just hit the president in the back of the head. No, you can't do that. They've got all kinds of things that would prevent that, but also his off the Oval Office isn't there. Also, I don't think the president spends as much time in the Oval Office as you would think. Are these pictures of you with cardboard cutouts of other presidents? <laughs> We're all cardboard under the skin, son. Funny how almost anything makes sense if a president says it. All cardboard under the skin. A nutcracker Washington. Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? <laughs> Please don't make fun of George Washington. Let's see. 
can't pick up any nuts. This is the same picture. Are these pictures of you with cardboard cutouts of other presidents? We're all cardboard under the skin, son. Funny how almost anything makes sense if a president says it. So this is George Bush Jr. they're making fun of in 2007, I believe, is when this game came out. I wonder if in a few more years we'll see Obama showing up in a lot of games. Probably not as many as you would think. These plates commemorate the core values of freedom-loving peoples everywhere. Eating a lot and hitting things with sticks? Exactly. I know he's in a couple, but not a lot. There's something special about George Bush Jr. for comedy. Undoubtedly. Hmm, throw pillows shaped like stars. Interesting, since actual stars are shaped more like throw pillows. Hmm. A potted plant? Is that a potted plant? Or the Vice President of the United States? It is hard to tell the difference. Uh, Declaration of Independence? This is either an early draft of the Declaration of Independence or a crude map of Lithuania. Hmm. Roosevelt's boxing gloves. boxing gloves, encased in lucite. TR or FDR? ER, I think. Let's look at this picture. I'm not sure who this is, but he must be important. Let's look at the trophy. US Senate talent show, second place. My finest hour. Look at the picture. Apparently, even U.S. presidents have mothers. Okay. So here's the war room door and a rat hole. Looks like there are rats in the Oval Office. Sam, you've finally done it. A straight line so easy, even I won't touch it. So I don't think we can walk into the war room. Let's try. No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. No! Don't throw us out! And stay out! Now I have to get back to the president. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse Hello. me! Hello. Oh, welcome, Governor Wizard. The president has been waiting for you. Governor Wizard? Hey, who better to run a state <laughs> than a washed up, urination loving former child star? No one! Well, we've learned something new. Let's go back in there and see if we can get more evidence, though. I wasn't ready to be thrown out. I guess you're never really ready to be no, thrown sir. out. I said soda abuse. It's a very important issue. Was I? No comprende, son. But I'm speaking English. Ah, oh, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. When will their devilish mimicry end? <laughs> Help me out with this here potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh no, momento, por favor. Impatient little guy, ain't he? Alright, let's look at the eagle statue. This is the exit door. Let's look at the camera. And the pithy campaign slogans. It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Oh, don't fool with those! Wouldn't want to be caught on national TV with my drawers down again. So I could say, give me all you got. Here. No can do. Or I could say free home delivery. Uh -uh. Nope, can't do either one. Hands off the cameras. Let's look at the eagle statue. And then the badges. Take a look at that. Snow globe. <laughs> I love this country. Guns and money. The snow globe has a little Apollo 13 inside. What happens when you shake it? I'm afraid to find out. 
It's a bunch of merit badges from the Weasel Scouts. I got one of those once, but they took it away when they found out what I used for bait. Alright, let's talk to Wizard. What's new, Wizard? That's Governor Wizard. Thank you very much. How'd you get to be Governor Wizard? What are you the governor of? The 51st and greatest state, West Dakota. Don't you guys read the papers? Just the facts. West funny. Dakota. You mean the obituaries, Max? Potato, potato. We're a young state, but with our own rich traditions that make us a distinct tourist destination, apart from the north and south. How'd you get into politics? Good question. How'd you get into politics? I won the election. It was a very close race, but I totally won the popular vote. Was it a runoff election? You see what I did there? Runoff? Cause he's wizard? You're still the master of fourth grade gutter humor, Max. <laughs> What were your qualifications for office? What were your qualifications for office? I'm a television celebrity. Now there's a platform I can get behind. So what are you doing here? What brings you to the Oval Office? I'm trying to build up nationwide support for the MRSAPP. Who's Mr. Sapp? And why didn't you want me to know you were talking about him? I can spell, you know. It's the Mount Rushmore <laughs> Soda Abuse Prevention Program. It's Mount totally Rushmore. changed my life. I've been carbonation free for over four weeks now. So, carbonation free, maybe he doesn't have to go to the bathroom all the time. Tell us about the MRSAPP. Be brief. I started the Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program after I became governor to help people get flat like me. But if we can't get federal funding, people all over the Dakotas are going to get right back on the pop. I don't work eight hours a day, six days a week just to throw my money away for some washed up soda junkies with no sense of self-control. You don't have any money, Max. Oh, right. Never mind. Good luck with that, Wiz. You don't drink soda at all. So you really kicked the soda habit, huh? And how? Back when I was on the pop, I was in a real downward spiral. That endless cycle of always looking for my next fizz, then having to take time out for number one. Then I saw that documentary about Peanut Franklin, and it convinced me I didn't want to be just another self-destructive former child star. Peanut Franklin, the lovable star of Mixed Nuts who was found in a seedy Hollywood motel room <laughs> dead of anaphylactic shock? What you mean you ain't got no jelly? Still too soon, Max. Sure you don't want a soda? Are you sure you wouldn't like a nice cold soda? Gee, thanks. I'll take a... Whoa, no! Stay strong, wizard. You control the bubbles. The bubbles don't control you. <laughs> Stop talking about soda, will ya? Stop talking about the crisp, clean taste or the effervescent fizz as it pours over ice into a frosty glass. All of it. I've been completely flat for over a month now. I can't go back to the way I used to be. I just can't. You know, it wouldn't really be a bad thing if we got rid of soda as a society. It is just a bunch of sugar water that isn't good for you. <laughs> Get back to drinking regular water that is more healthy. Alright, we're ready to interpret, so let's interpret. We're ready to interpret for you. Don't tell me! The president needs the interpreter! What did he say, Sam? I'm speaking English! I don't even have an accent! <laughs> Can't understand a word! <laughs> See you later, wizard. See you around, wizard. Let's look at the globe. Nice globe. Amazing how often I need it in this job. And then what's on his desk? We have a ribbon. Hey now, that's my super special top secret ribbon. Don't touch it. And the national budget. And Chuckles here and the president. Let's look at the national budget. Stand back, son. That there's the national budget. We have a calendar. Hands off, boy! That's my presidential calendar. Stuck to chuckles. Hey, man, do you work here? What tipped you off? We're freelance police, buddy. This is a national emergency. And we don't appreciate your sassy mouth. Auditions for new White House pet down the hall. 
This can only end in violence. <laughs> hmm, this guy's voice sounds familiar. Do you recognize him, Max? Half the time, I don't even recognize you, Sam. I'm over here, little buddy. Who said that? <laughs> you do seem familiar, Chuckles. We saw him at the end of the last episode. Do I know you from somewhere? Yeah, I'm that voice in the back of your head that tells you to mind your own business. The veiled threats, the surly tone. I've got it! You're that pit boss from the Toy Mafia. I smell a conspiracy. You smell a nosy dog who's going to get smacked if he don't stop asking questions. What do you do around here, Chuckles? What do you do around here? I give out free t-shirts to the visitor who asked the dumbest question of the day. Please accept my apologies, but we're all out of Husky Boys sizes. Woo! Double burn! <laughs> I thought you were on my side, Max. <laughs> I just call him like I see him, Sam. So you're a bodyguard. You're the president's personal bodyguard? You catch on quick. We need to have a private meeting with the president, national security. Go right ahead. I meant private, as in wait outside and we'll call you when we need you. And national security, as in we need to clobber the president on the head to break his hypnotic trance. Your <laughs> gift for subterfuge is uncanny, Max. And that's uncanny as in you two try anything and I'll plug you. So... What's behind that What's door? What's behind the door? It's a private club for people who aren't annoying me. You two ain't invited. Should we pummel him together, Sam, or would you rather take turns? We can create a national security incident after we've saved the president, Max. Seriously, what's behind the door, though? Seriously, pal, what's behind that door? It's the door to the war room, with unrestricted access to the United States' entire arsenal of long-range missile weapons. There's ah. no part of that sentence I didn't like. Then it's unanimous. We'd like a tour. Nobody gets into the war room during peacetime. Stay away from it, or I'll have to escort you out. Interesting. So you're always with the president, aren't you? You're always with the president? Even when he's got a... you know... Always. I never leave his side. Your codependency sickens me. And it sickens me in exactly the same way, doesn't it, Max? I mean, Sam. <laughs> so what's the Toy Mafia man doing here is what's the question. What's the Toy Mafia got to do with the Secret Service? What Toy Mafia? Oh, he's good, Sam. The Orso Nostra, the sacred organization you inducted me and Max into in a time-honored ceremony. The one that we infiltrated, repeatedly duped, and then blew up in a fiery explosion of death and property damage. I was going to casually forget to mention that part, Max. That's a very entertaining story, Chowderheads. Now, run along and play whilst I protect the leader of our country. Hmm. I suspect foul play. I think somebody may have hypnotized the president while you weren't looking. You, perhaps. Very funny. Come on, let us into the war room. Two for the war room, please. Nothing doing. But Max came all this way. He's been dreaming of it for years. Can you look into those big brown slits he uses for eyes and crush the lifelong dream of a childlike rabbity creature? Even if I were moved by that kind of thing, which I ain't, this door stays locked at all times, unless we're in a war. So we're gonna have to go to war. We'll be back. We'll be back. I and, uh, cannot wait. I will be back. We will start with interpreting for the president next recording. That's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. All of that helps me out. If you want to support me, you can click on my name, Rido. On the right will be a blue button that says support this channel. Click it and make a donation. And if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.